at Oak Mountain State Park along the um, main road, uh, one ridge over from the Cahaba River Valley. And to my right is Lake Tranquility, and behind me is the creek that drains Lake Tranquility, leading to Garrett's Gulch. So this is a fairly wet site, fairly wet soils, typical of where you'll find loblolly pine, probably our most prevalent species of pine in the state of Alabama. The uh, seed is distributed on the wind, comes out of the pine cones, and colonizes new uh, bare sites. So uh, loblolly pine is typically found in pure stands where there's been a, a soil disturbance such as uh, high winds or tornado and uh, then produces uh, pure stands of, of loblolly pine. That's why it works so well on clear cuts and has been planted a lot by the forest industry for pulp and paper production. This is typical of a loblolly pine site, no, low-lying area, fairly moist soil. And the distribution of the trees is, is random. Um, the seed is dropped from the cones on the tree, and uh, they come down first, and then following that comes the, uh, the, the pine needles later in the fall to cover the seed. Now we're gonna look at some of the features of loblolly pine. Uh, most of these trees are typical of what you'll find as the average uh, size of mature loblolly pine in Alabama, roughly between 18 inches and 2 feet in diameter. But we do have some that are much larger, um, more like 3 feet in diameter, and we'll look at those. This is about as large a loblolly pine as you'll find in a natural stand in central Alabama, approximately 3 feet in diameter and around 80 feet tall, a massive tree. The bark of loblolly pine typically is uh, of large plates with deep fissures. And you'll notice on the east side of this tree, uh, the br blue-green color is caused by uh, lichen, um, which is a combination of uh, algae and fungus. And very evident here, so little colonies of microflora in the uh, deep fissures of the uh, loblolly pine. Here's a typical branch from a loblolly pine. Uh, we'll be talking about the uh, number of needles that are uh, in each fascicle of pine on the different species. Loblolly has three needles in each fascicle, and these needles are intermediate in length between the shortleaf pine and the longleaf pine. So roughly uh, five to seven inches long. And we'll be looking at those other species and comparing them to uh, loblolly pine. Some have two fascicle, two needles per fascicle and, and uh, some have three. Longleaf and uh, loblolly have three and the shortleaf in Virginia have two. So we'll be looking at those. Interesting uh, on this branch is the terminal bud, which will produce the new set of needles uh, this coming spring. So what we're looking at here are the needles that have already grown for one growing season. And the second year needles have already dropped to the ground. And that produces the pine straw that um, people use in their gardens and landscapes. But now we have throughout the winter, uh, the uh, one-year-old needles that will grow for one more growing season and the new needles will come from this terminal bud right here and grow out to form the next set of needles. Another interesting feature here is that we have a one-year-old pine cone. The pine cones typically grow for two years and um, you're seeing here the small um, cone from one-year-old uh, um, one-year-old cone and then it'll grow another year and produce the seed and these seed will drop this coming fall in the fall of uh, 2021. The pine cones are intermediate in size between what we'll see on shortleaf pine and longleaf pine. So shortleaf uh, cones will be a little bit smaller than this and longleaf will be a little bit longer. So the loblolly is typically uh, around four to five inches uh, in length and these cones are closed now because it's been fairly moist recently but when they dry uh, in the fall they open up and drop the seed out and uh, the wings on the seed will distribute the seed um, throughout the, uh, the, the site and uh, colonize the new site. 
Michelle, we're on the southern uh, ridge of Double Oak Mountain, uh, walking on the Blue Trail, just down from King's Chair. So this is a very dry, rocky site, and we're uh, finding three important species of pine that uh, are uh, dry site pines. On the, uh, on the right, we have Virginia pine that has all the cones, lots of cones. Just to its left is shortleaf pine. And just behind the shortleaf is longleaf pine. So this area has all three of them growing in one place. We're looking at Virginia pine. Uh, Virginia pine typically has uh, prolific cones uh, clustered on the branches. So if you see a, uh, a pine tree in the forest with lots and lots of cones, it's generally going to be Virginia pine. The needles are in pairs. Uh, we call the groups of needles fascicles. And Virginia pine has two needles in each fascicle that are twisted. So that's very typical, maybe about um, an inch and a half long to two inches long, these needles. And the bark uh, on this older tree that's probably 80 to 100 years old on this very dry site uh, gets flakier as you go higher in the tree. So that's characteristic of Virginia pine and more of a reddish appearance to the bark with the flakes. That's pretty much characteristic of, of Virginia pine. And next we'll look at shortleaf pine. The shortleaf pine, uh, compared to Virginia pine, actually has longer needles um, than Virginia. Fewer cones, generally, on the trees, but it also has two needles per fascicle. These are probably three inches long, and they're straight. So they're not twisted like Virginia pine. Two straight needles for shortleaf pine, fewer cones, and We'll look at the bark of, uh, of uh, shortleaf pine here uh, next, over here. Now we're looking at the bark of shortleaf pine. This tree is about the same size and age as the Virginia pine we just looked at, probably 80 to 100 years old. Uh, typically, shortleaf pine has a platier bark with lar larger plates than uh, the Virginia pine, which has flakier bark. But one dead giveaway for shortleaf pine are these pock marks on the plates. I'm going to bring this closer. Uh, looks kind of like the surface of the moon. That is a um, dead giveaway for shortleaf pine. Now we're looking at longleaf pine. Uh, again, about the same age as the shortleaf and Virginia pines that we looked at. Uh, bark is a little coarser and, um, and looser. So this is typical of, of longleaf pine. The needles, in contrast to the shortleaf pine and Virginia pine, are in groups of threes. These fascicles have three needles. And much longer than uh, the shortleaf and obviously Virginia pine. And the cones are much bigger on longleaf pine. So generally um, between five and uh, seven inches long for longleaf pine. The seeds are inside here. The cones open up in the heat and dryness of the fall and uh, the seeds drop out on all the pines. So let's do a comparison uh, quickly among these three uh, dry site pines. Longleaf with uh, larger cones and three needles per fascicle, longer, longer needles, and short leaf, or excuse me, Virginia pine with uh, sm the smallest cones and the smallest needles in, in pairs, twisted. And in between those two is short leaf with intermediate size cones and, and leaves, needles, and again, in fascicles of two. The um, 
brown needles are uh, natural. They fall off uh, after two years of growth. So if you see brown needles behind the green needles of a pine tree, just know those are the uh, second year needles that are coming off. They have been there for two years and now they're falling to the ground. And that's what makes the pine straw that you find on the ground under pine trees and that uh, often is used for mulch uh, for, for gardens. Uh, the current year's growth, this branch came off of the shortleaf pine I'm holding, uh, are still green for another year. They will remain green throughout the winter for um, uh, this, this current dormant season, but then they will uh, grow again uh, along with the new needles that will develop uh, this coming growing season. So uh, these are the uh, one-year-old needles from shortleaf pine and um, we just looked at the uh, two-year-old needles of longleaf pine that have fallen to the ground at this point.